Hello, anyone and everyone. I am Echo, and today we are exploring abduction. Uh, two things real quick. One, uh, it turns out that I actually could correct some of the stuttering issues that the game was having, the uh, where it was hitching up and suddenly dropping frame rate for a second or two. Um, it became a lot more common once I got into this bigger area, so my previous tests uh, ended up basically not really mattering. Um, basically, I turned down some of the settings, some of the ones that are more uh, processor intensive, and that seems to have corrected the problem. I tested it out for a couple minutes uh, running around this area, and it seems that the stuttering is almost entirely gone. Uh, so hopefully that won't be a problem anymore. Also, uh, uh, what was the other fucking thing? Oh yeah, also the game seems to actually have much higher, uh, much longer loading times than it did on starting a new game, and I, uh, on reloading the save, it takes a lot longer to load than starting a new game, and I believe that's because when you start a new game, it puts you in that uh, beach area for the like prologue, and that's a much smaller area than this is, so I think that's uh, what you know affects the the loading time probably. Um, so overall, gotta say I'm kind of disappointed in the like technical. Um, uh, technical prowess of the game, or whatever the hell you want to call it. I mean, the, the game looks beautiful, absolutely great, really good graphics and everything like that, but uh, the performance could definitely stand to be a little bit better. Um, that's not a huge deal. Uh, it's mostly just a problem because since I'm recording it for you guys, I want it to, you know, look nice and play smoothly so that the video is pleasant to watch. Um... For me, personally, I could play through it with some stuttering issues and not really mind. I mean, I played through uh, Vanilla Fallout New Vegas without any patches on PlayStation 3 uh, right after it came out, and I still played through that entire game despite it crashing a lot and having a terrible frame rate and glitches all over the place and everything like that, because if it's just a good enough game, I'll play through it regardless, but... Uh, yeah, oh well, just a little, little bit of tiny disappointment there. But anyway, we're, let's get back into it. This is Abduction, big old point-and-click adventure game. Holy crap, there's so many places I could go. Um, we just talked, or not talked to, we listened to this recorded message from Yosef, uh, basically saying that the town of Hunrath is a really nice place. A lot of the other people here were abducted, uh, but some of them were actually born here, presumably... Uh, born from the people who were abducted, and we're currently stuck in this old-timey looking town, and holy crap, I just realized there's a, like, rocket ship right up there, oh my god, oh my god, so excited, okay, let's, uh, let's see, there's some, like, stairs there that'll lead up to other places, uh, there's a building here, I'm actually gonna go up these stairs first, because these stairs, I believe, should lead to another recorded message right there, I saw it earlier when we were entering the town from down at the bottom of the hill. Alright, so, the tree. This is the tree. It has been here in Hunrock for as long as anyone can remember. Its health is intimately tied to everything in our little greenhouse. Our cell we live in. Our ecosystem. It has provided many surprises over the years, including some interesting seeds that you will learn more about. Many have postulated, yet we really know very little about its origins. But we do know it should be cherished and protected. Okay. So yeah, he just mentioned the biome that they're in, or biodome, or whatever that he said. I don't, I don't remember exactly how he worded it. Um, uh, but that basically goes along with what I was already uh, pointing out, that it seems like this one little section, this tiny little area of uh, all these red rocks are a completely separate thing from the rest of the planet. And it seems that they are enclosed in a invisible dome... And, at least for now, this tree seems to be the only tree that's in this dome. So is that the only way that they're getting oxygen? Honestly, I'd... it seems a little unrealistic. 
to uh to believe that uh to believe that one tree could provide enough oxygen for an entire town of people but uh, they did they've obviously planted other plants as well i think only trees though i think trees are the only plant that uh can absorb carbon dioxide and uh put out oxygen uh in any significant amount at least but then there are there are some more trees over there uh Okay, yeah, never mind. So I guess they probably got the seeds from that tree and planted the other ones. So those ones would also be producing a bit of oxygen. And they probably planted those trees before there were too many people here. So I guess if there were only a couple people here to start with, the one tree could provide enough. Not sure. I'm no botanist. I do not know for certain. That's just my theory. My video game theory. Okay, that is locked. Damn, doesn't look locked. Guess there must be a, it's probably that right there, that board on the other side is probably blocking it. Okay, can't just climb under the door. Not like Riven, unfortunately. Alright, what's down here? Oh, there's a walkway down there with a, no, 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 don't unlock my cursor. Alright, there's a walkway down there with a machine. That machine probably lifts up this door. The tree looks healthy, as far as I can tell. There is a yellow tube coming from it. That yellow tube goes off in this direction. I noticed it earlier. It connects to the water fountain. Um, or water tower. So I, I would guess... That's how they water the tree to to keep it alive. Oh, somebody's bouncing lasers over there. I would guess this pipe is hooked up to some kind of underground uh, water system similar to a well. It's probably drawing water up into the water tower. And the people presumably also drink from the water tower, but uh, it seems that a large portion of it goes to the tree to help keep it alive. Alright, we can't seem to get up here. Except from over there. Okay, so we'll try going over there next. Except, ooh, we can get up on top of the roof. That's neat. Can we interact with this? No, okay. I wonder what this is for. Does it serve a purpose, or is it just... Eh. Put a ramp there. Let the player walk up here, take a look around at the vista. Seems to be the case. Okay. Back down the ramp. Alright, um, and anything in this corner, I highly doubt it, but just in case, we're checking it anyway. Alright, let's go back down. Now let's go into... Uh, is this house open? No, it's not. Okay. Let's go into this house. And I guess then we'll check out the mine. Ooh. That's a odd uh, collection of things. I. What is this supposed to be? A coat hanger? Is that a lamp at the top? I have no freaking deal. Oh boy. Okay. Hmm. Alright. Obviously, this used to be somebody's house. Aw, oh, doggies. I'm um, not sure what breed of dog that is. I forgot its name. It's a, it's a fluffy one. Super fluffy. Alright. Oh, and here's another bit of look at this shit how carved out it was like perfectly with weird alien technology it's a perfect sphere inside here and these rocks too and it was like cut off like that oh geez so cool looking I have to wonder why anybody would do that though 
Presumably the aliens, I mean, not, uh, not that I'm thinking a person did that, but still. <sighs> Alright. Lights, uh, does this, uh, just gonna throw a guess out there. I think this tunnel probably would wrap all the way around back to that other tunnel that we saw. The one that was under the tree that had the machine next to it for li presumably lifting up the door. But there doesn't seem to be any way to get past these rocks. I don't see anything we can interact with here. Again, can't crouch down, so uh, if I'm supposed to be picking up one of these and I'm not close enough, well then, it's the game's fault because I can't get any closer. Alright. Let's get out of here. Any notes or anything left around? Doesn't seem to be. Cozy little house, though. Ah, oh, dream catchers. Those are cool. Alright. So, doesn't seem to be anything else in that house. Over here is more really big areas. Okay, and then these... Okay, so this... Oh, wait, never mind. All right, so this would be on the other side of those rocks to the right in that room. Oh, the music is picking up. Is that the game's way of letting me know that this is a area with a puzzle in it or something? Doesn't seem to be anything significant in here. Hmm. Okay. Let's check out the other side. I did not forget it. Don't worry. So yeah, this doesn't lead around to the other uh, tunnel that's under the tree. This is just a singular mine wrapped around this one house for some reason. Probably due to more goofy business with the uh, with the abducting of perfectly circular areas. All right, yeah, there doesn't seem to be anything we can interact with here. Maybe this uh, this board? No. All right. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be anything we can interact with here. Um, of course, these lights are tied to. Some power outlines that reach over up to there and go across over to that area past there. So, again, maybe we have to turn the power on before we can do anything with these. Um, though that would seem to only turn on the lights, and I don't know how much that would help. Um, warning, do not approach anything that even remotely resembles this diagram unless it has been disabled. Yep, there's that thing again. All right, and uh, there's another diagram with a warning on it. Lots of, lots of nice little details in this town. It really looks like people used to live here. It's so easy to make a video game world that just looks completely dead. Like, nobody really lives there. It's always been a problem I've had with, the uh, with, like, Dragon Age Origins. It's a good game otherwise, but it's not immersive at all because the world design is just kind of oh, amateurish, in my opinion. But, uh, of course, a lot of people love Bioware, so I'm going to stop criticizing what anything they, they do, especially Dragon Age Origins typically considered one of their better games. Anyway, alright, it's a nice little farm here. Been growing potatoes. And, uh... Not much else by the looks of it. Oh, and somebody... Wait a minute. Are these... Okay, no, those are rocks. I just... For a second I thought those were all potatoes, and I just realized, like, what, did somebody go and trash their, uh their farm and strew potatoes all over the ground? No. That doesn't seem to be what happened, though clearly somebody did leave in a hurry because they did leave a bunch of potatoes here just in their little baskets. 
Alright. Oh, that's a neat little wind chime. Or, it's not really a wind chime. It's a decoration of some kind. It looks cool, though. Alright. Now, this pipe... Again, this is from where it's supposed to be drawing up water. At least I thought so. Seems to not be connected to anything. And there's just another track. Why does the track for the minecart go right through the farm? That's weird. It's very weird. Alright. And then we got this anomaly looking thing over here. It's coming from the laser. Alright. Is this safe to walk into? Oh. Makes my vision go blue. Oh, okay. I don't think that would kill us, but that's still very unpleasant. If this were any other video game, I wouldn't have even bothered to touch that, because I would have assumed it would be an instant death or something, but uh, there's never any death in uh, Cyan Worlds type of adventure games. We've got another glow bug. We're flying off in that direction. Are those things supposed to be guiding me on where to go next or something? I'm not sure. But I came out of this building. Oh boy, look at that door. That is a mist door. Alright. Of course, it's completely locked up. <laughs> Hell yeah, whatever you say, brother. Okay, so, uh... First of all, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that was Robin Miller. I could be wrong. Not sure. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Robin and Rand Miller are the two guys who created Myst and founded Cyan Worlds. Um, and I, I recognize Rand Miller in an instant. The man has a very distinctive-looking face. He played Atris in the first Mist game, and second Mist game, and third Mist game, and I think also the fourth and fifth. I don't, rem I don't know if uh, Atris appeared in four and five, but I know he appears in three, and of course he appears in one and two because I played those, so I know that for sure. Um, but yeah, Rand Miller, or I mean Robin Miller, who I think that guy was. Uh, a little bit, a little bit less instantly recognizable for me personally, uh, but I do believe that was him. I believe he also played, uh, um, what was his name? Shit, Cirrus. I believe he also played Cirrus in the first Mist game. Uh, again, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Please don't kill me if I am. But uh, as for his character, who we do not yet know the name of, so for now I'm going to call him Robin, because why the hell not? Um, yeah, it seems our general goal is, in fact, just to get the power back on. 
so that once he has more power, he can do stuff, and we can get out of here, this place, this, uh, place that is vaguely described as a prison, a prison, sorry. Um, so yeah. Hey, that's something to do, that's a goal, that's a clear thing in mind. It's good to have those in a video game. Um... Also, I kind of like his accent. It was vaguely uh, uh, westerny, but modern enough to not sound ridiculous. Because unfortunately, a lot of a lot of people in like movies and stuff who try to do like a old timey western accent end up sounding kind of goofy. I guess would be a good way to put it. Oh, also the other thing he uh, mentioned that everything was battened down because they were getting ready for the battle. Um, and that's kind of funny. Um, that seems like a pretty good, like, vague excuse for all the puzzles to be all over the place, because I presume a lot of the puzzles are going to have to do with unlocking things and opening new doors and pathways and stuff like that. Um, much like over by the tree, there was the door that uh, I presume we're going to be lifting up when we can access that machine that's below it. Um, so that's a, a really nice story excuse for all of the puzzles to be over the place for the player to solve because uh, they had to lock everything up in preparation for the battle. So that's super cool to me. Alright. That looks like our uh, minecart thing. Not really a minecart. Some type of cart, though. Looks like we're going to be able to lower it down on here at some point. We have to get up there first, and uh, that stairway leads over to the left to... Oh, hey! I didn't notice this button at first. Oh, but there's no power. Exactly! Again, we need to get the power on to open up this door. You see? Exactly what I was just talking about. All the puzzles are going to have to, not all, but quite a few of the puzzles are going to have to do with unlocking and opening doors and stuff like that, and uh, step one of that seems to be to get the power back on. We already saw the power lines go over in that direction by the spaceship, so I think that's probably where we need to head first in order to really progress. Um, but of course, I'm still looking around because, holy crap, I want to get a good mental image of everything in this area. Um, also, there is that elevator, which might lead up there. So let's just check that out real quick. Oh, and this, this whole spot here. Such a perfect example of the beautiful architecture and everything that I love from the Myst games. Where it's like, hey, just let's just randomly have some walkways that go out over the water to have the player walk on. Just because it's the kind of thing they do. They did. They do that in uh, in Mist in the Channelwood Age. And I believe they also do that in a in one or two areas in Riven. I can't remember very well. Um, but it, it's it's the kind of thing that they they seem to like doing a lot, and it looks really nice. And it's just it's just fun to. Oh, it's working. Cool. Okay, so there's enough power for this. Oh, is he, uh, is he sort of locked up in the, like, power generator room for the town? And so as we divert more power to him, he'll activate more things like this, or like that door that wouldn't open. That would be very nifty. Very nifty indeed. Okay, we can totally... Oh, that's also locked, okay. Let's look up here first. Get a good look all around again. Oh, there's a whole forest over there. Much bigger trees than the ones that were over in front of the house, too. Okay, so yeah, they definitely have enough oxygen for them. Uh, from all of those. And oh my god. And this is so cool. Just everything. It's just the the world design and the architecture. There's such a perfectly unique style 
to the way that Cyan Worlds uh, builds their worlds. You know? it's. Uh, I know I'm probably sounding like a big dumb fanboy gushing over this or something. And for somebody who hasn't even played all of the Myst games, I've only played the first two, Myst and Riven. It's kind of... Probably sounds especially ridiculous. But oh well. Alright, so what did we just do? We just opened up this... To let the water out. What did that even do? I'm not sure. Let me... Oh, it won't move now. Oh, of course. That makes perfect logical sense. The water's rushing through. We would need to be... freaking Hercules to pull that gate down now. Because it's just a simple pulley system. So we would need to fight against the current of the water to put the gate back down. Well, at least that does alleviate one possible problem. Where we put the gate up, the water starts going down... And then we walk down there, and we find out, whoops, there was something else we needed to do while the water wasn't rushing by. And we needed to do that first, and then open the gate. Um, but if the game won't let us put the gate back down, then clearly it, it just would not be fair. The game would literally become unbeatable if they, uh, if they did that and made us have to uh, try and unlock it. Or, I mean, uh, close it again in order to do something. Okay. Oh! And there's that noise again. Yeah. So that's just, uh, oh geez, that's super... Those big balls are super reminiscent of the, uh... The thing from the cover of the Riven box art. The little weird cocoon village that Catherine was kept in. And down there... Looks to be... Uh, it looks significant just because it stands out from the rest of its environment. And that's like... Game Design 101 is to have important things that the player needs to interact with stand out from the environment around them. Um, but it's on the other side of the biodome, so... I don't... I don't know if we're ever going to get over on the other side of this. I, I, would, I would guess we probably would, but... Certainly not anytime soon. And it doesn't even look like there's any distinct pathways that would lead over there. So I don't know. Oh well. Still, nice view. Kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of funny. It's as if Cyan Worlds knows, hey, you like stopping and looking at the, at the view every once in a while, so let's make a, a pathway perfectly carved out into the rocks for you to get a nice, uh, nice big chunk of it. All at once. Alright. And we can't jump down on this, of course, because invisible walls stop us from jumping off of anything. And that's fine. Um, often, invisible walls are very annoying, but in a, in a puzzle game in particular, uh, you do have to kind of be careful and control where the player can go, because it's not a platformer. I don't have a jump button. Um... We can't climb up on things, you know, so having uh, having the ability to jump down could easily get the player in a uh, in a position where they might not be able to get back up and might be stuck. Alright, this, uh, oh, we can't move this? That's weird. I totally expected to be able to move this around. Doesn't look like we can't can interact with it at all, though. Oh, stuttering, please stop. Please stop. Okay, that's weird. Um, oh, we can't... Okay, yeah, we can't get any further. It's... The, the path stops. And this door... is still blocked. Okay. So... Seems like we don't actually have that many options. We open up the... water flow, so whatever that did... We've clearly gotten some progression, but not much. Kind of surprising. I assumed those lasers were going to be the next thing that we need to mess with to complete the many puzzles. Um, and that door is still 
will not open until we get more power. All right. Um, before I continue over there, which I'm pretty sure is progression, I'm going to take a moment to run back to the right of the house, because there was a section that we did not explore uh, that was uh, past the graveyard. So I'm going to do that, but actually we're going to do that at the start of the next episode, because I just realized I'm out of time for this one, unfortunately. Oh boy, time flies when you're really having fun, and this is such a... So as games like blowing me away. It really does just feel like another missed game, and that's the best compliment I could give it. It's a missed game with modern hardware and a different story. So, yeah, basically... Anyway, though, I will see you all next time. Hope you've enjoyed it. Bye bye